gue sih ya. Hello everybody. Um, yes, welcome sorry. back. Great. Hi, Senator. Um, welcome back. Uh, this is our seventh session. Uh, I have the pleasure of introducing uh, Senator Ehenyan, uh, who is the president of SIBAN, which is the, uh, the one of the, the, the Nigerian Blockchain Association. I think something more than that, but um, but certainly Nigerian Blockchain Association. Um, so, Senator, we were talking earlier about uh, adoption in Nigeria being stratospheric at the moment. So I'm sure you've got your hands full. Uh, so do do uh, do tell us about uh, what's happening uh, in Africa. Thank you very much. Uh, it's my uh, pleasure to be here at the Blockchain uh, Association's um, Forum um, Summit. Um, I'm very delighted to speak about um, crypto asset policy making and the future of um, global economy. Um, looking at what has um, gone wrong, uh, what's what we're doing well and perhaps what we need to do better. I'll start uh, from looking at what went well, right, as far as um, from the Nigerian perspective um, is concerned. Um, in Nigeria, it's been a fascinating journey, really, especially from the crypto assets adoption um, um, angle. We have seen millions of Nigerians adopt cryptocurrency massively, um, especially um, knowing that Nigeria is um, largely a very youth, uh, youthful population. Uh, we have seen an increasing um, adoption of cryptocurrencies uh, for various reasons, investments, also for remittances, cross-border transactions, even setting local transactions on e-commerce platforms now also um, rely on crypto assets. Um, so it's it's been really fascinating how, how things have been um, evolving in Nigeria. Um, I have a list of what, what has gone well, right, in the last few years until date. Um, first of all, in 2020, no, 2019, Nigeria recognized the need to have a blockchain adoption strategy. And I think it's critical for any country to be able to say, this is the direction we wish to take. Uh, it's important that the country comes up with a national blockchain adoption strategy or something so that you, you can guide steps you know, in that sector. In Nigeria, it was the National Information Technology uh, Inf uh, Development Agency, NITDA, supported by the Federal Ministry of um, uh, Communications and the Digital Economy that drove the idea of having a national blockchain adoption strategy. And um, I'm happy to say that CBAN, the Stakeholders in Blockchain Technology Association of Nigeria, which is Nigeria's blockchain association, is one of the um, stakeholders recognized under the adoption strategy. And um, since then, uh, what we have seen is that uh, players or stakeholders in that sector, especially government agencies, public agencies, regulators, have had to work together to ensure that Nigeria takes one, at least a, a certain direction as far as crypto assets or blockchain adoption is concerned. Um, secondly, uh, what went well has been the Securities and Exchange Commission, which is Nigeria's um, capital market regulator. Um, back in 2017, the SEC recognized very early that um, crypto assets um, should be seen as some kind of financial um, technology innovation, fintech innovation, which should be regulated. But they should be uniquely um, uh, regulated because of um, how, um, you, how, how unique they are in terms of their features. So in 2017, we set up this fintech roadmap committee with some industry players from the blockchain space were also part of. And from then till now, what we have had is that sometime in 2019, uh, the SEC came up with the idea of um, regulating crypto assets as digital assets, you know, recognizing crypto assets um, in four major ways. One, they, they could be uh, regulated as, as a security, uh, they could be regulated as a utility, they could be regulated 
as um, also um, derivatives as well. Uh, talk about stable coins and all of that stuff when used for um, investment and securities purposes, of course. But the big one for the SEC um, happened in May 2022, of course, this year, when the SEC, for the first time in the history of the country, recognized virtual asset service providers as part of the players in Nigeria's capital markets. This essentially you know, brought um, crypto asset players within a framework of um, the Investment and Securities Act, which has been governing the Nigerian investment and securities markets. And uh, as I speak, we have a licensing regime for crypto asset service providers or virtual asset service providers who wish to play in that space. Um, currently, we have um, four major classifications of um, virtual asset service providers in Nigeria within the framework of the capital markets. Um, one is um, the uh, digital assets um, offering uh, platform called DIOPS. Um, we also have the digital assets and custodians called DAX. Uh, we also have the digital asset exchange, which is the crypto exchanges we all know very well, called DAX as well as generally what you call the virtual asset service providers called the um, VASP. So with this categorization or classification, what the SEC has done effectively is to ensure that every player in that space is brought within the framework of the Investment and Securities Act. Um, another big one for Nigeria as far as um, how well uh, it has come is uh, we also, in March of 2022, had regulators come together, the SEC, the Central Bank of Nigeria, the Nigerian Financial Intelligence Agency, uh, UNIT, NFIU, as well as other uh, uh, law enforcement agencies come together to say, hey guys, it's high time we started looking at a regulatory framework that would be compliant with the FATF standards as far as AML CFT compliance was concerned. And so they, they came up with this national um, virtual asset work stream uh, where some of the industry players were also asked to get involved in. Uh, I, was, um, I was particularly privileged to be uh, to have represented uh, industry players in that space uh, by virtue of my office as the president of Stakeholders in Blockchain Technology Association of Nigeria. And um, it was pretty interesting because for the first time, we had regulators and law enforcement agencies, all everyone in the house talking about how to ensure that the Nigerian crypto space is safe how to ensure that we can minimize the risk of um, fraud, of um, uh, the use of cryptocurrencies or crypto assets for money laundering, terrorism financing, and all of that. And so the work stream was able to conclude its work after um, a few, um, a number of months, and um, ended up trying to socialize the idea of, it, of the travel rule to crypto exchanges, both local and foreign, that play in the Nigerian crypto space. That, that's a very big one for, for Nigeria, you know, especially for those of us who might already be um, uh, very familiar or aware of um, the very, not, not very good past as far as uh, crypto assets regulation is concerned in Nigeria. And then lastly, um, talking about how well we add for the first time the National Assembly, that's Nigeria's uh, legislative harm in Abuja, come up with a new Money Laundering Act 2022 to ensure that it reflects um, the inclusion of virtual assets you know, within the AML and CFT compliance structure. So for the first time in the country, we are now have a legislation, not, not any directive by any regulation regulator. We have a legislation saying that virtual assets should also um, comply with AML and CFT and regulations, meaning that KYC and all that stuff that help to improve transaction reporting, that help to improve um, 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 so monitoring of, um, of transactions really, really um, just got better. And lastly, 
um, as a self-regulatory association, we saw the need to introduce what we call the code of conduct in uh, back in June 2022. We introduced the code of conduct for virtual asset service providers in Nigeria, seeing that more and more players were coming to the Nigerian crypto space. In CBAN today, we have both local and foreign players as members of the association. What we have done is to ensure that before you become a member, you must adopt the code of conduct. The code of conduct um, comprises about 13 um, provisions um, spanning areas like risk uh, management, spanning areas around uh, AML and CFT compliance uh, mechanisms and what have you, as well as corporate governance, just to ensure that we as a self-regulatory body are also, you know, um, contributing when it comes to ensuring consumer protection and investor safety in the market. Um, what didn't go well? <laughs> well, um, a lot didn't go well as well, um, but I'll try to highlight two points. First, although Nigeria has a national blockchain adoption strategy, what we have noticed is that there is still uh, the obvious lack of collaboration amongst regulators, uh, including public agencies. So although if you look at the national adoption strategy, uh, blockchain adoption strategy, it has a list of over 15 key uh, players, both regulators in the, in the, uh, as well as the public agencies and some private sector, including CBAN, we were also identified there as a stakeholder. But what we have noticed is that you you find that there is no coordination going on. So while the idea of the adoption strategy is for every regulator and um, you know player or stakeholder in that space to be on one page, what we are seeing is that um, while the CBN is going this way, as far as crypto asset is concerned, the SEC is going the other way. So this is not um, doing um, us too well in the space and it's affecting um, the level of adoption as, as far as taking crypto mainstream is concerned. Secondly, uh, is the issue regarding the CBN stand. CBN is the central bank of Nigeria. The stance of the CBN on cryptocurrency um, transactions in Nigeria's banking and financial system. Um, in 2017, 2018, the central bank took a risk uh, approach uh, towards cryptocurrency, saying although they are not regulated by the central bank, although they are not legal tender, uh, please, banks and other financial institutions, when you facilitate crypto-related transactions, ensure that you conduct your KYC so that it is compliant with Nigeria's AML and CFT laws. Uh, that changed effectively in 2021, when in February, the CBN said, no way, we can't take this anymore shut down the entire banking and financial system against any cryptocurrency related transactions and faults. And anyone, any bank that facilitates any crypto related transactions would be fine. Indeed, there were many fines in, within that time and now, you know, by the central bank. Um, some very big banks got fined. Fines were going up to uh, seriously about one, over a billion Naira in terms of fines. Um, all right. It was pretty, pretty ugly, really. So what can we do better in 30 seconds? Um, one, we need to ensure that the national blockchain adoption strategy is revealed so that we can have more collaboration. The collaboration level right now is pretty poor. Um, secondly, the central bank needs to review its stance on cryptocurrencies by shifting from bans and prohibitions to a more of transaction monitoring by collaborating with the NFIU and other stakeholders in the space to ensure transparency in the markets. I think these two things will help Nigeria get crypto assets adoption right. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you very much, Senator. Uh, again, great to hear from Nigeria. Um, as I said earlier, it sounds like you've got your hands full. Uh, so we're going to close the session there. Uh, come yeah. back in about five minutes to six minutes. No, 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 no Brian, starting just now at 1.15, straight away. 
Oh, fine. Okay, great. Yes. Uh, yeah. So, uh, yes. Yeah, so we'll we'll close the session now. I think. And. Uh,